ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه ومختاره من خلقه وخليله اشهد انه بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح للامه وجل الله عز وجل به الغمه جاهد في الله حق الجهاد حتى اتاه اليقين صلوات الله وتسليماته وتبريكاته عليه وعلى اهل بيته يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد الرحمه كصفه في اعلى درجاتها وفي منتهى مقاماتها لا تنبغي الا لله سبحانه وتعالى كل صفاته علا كما ان كل اسمائه حسنى هو ارحم الراحمين سبقت رحمته غضبه وغلبت رحمته غضبه من عنايته برحمته جل وعلا وعنايته وعنايته ببيان رحمته سبحانه وتعالى ان اول ما نقرا من الوحي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان اول الصفات التي تنعت لفظ الجلاله وتوضحه وتجليه صفه الرحمه الرحمن الرحيم ثم يعود المولى سبحانه وتعالى ليجلي الصفه اخرى وليبينها مره بعد مره وكره بعد كره الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم خلق الله 100 رحمه جعلها 100 قسم انزل منها رحمه واحده يحنو بها الوالد على ولده ويرحم بها الكبير الصغير حتى الوحش ترفع حافرها عن صغيرها بهذه الرحمه الواحده التي قسمت في الخلق اما 99 رحمه فقد ادخرها الله سبحانه وتعالى لخلص عباده واصفياء اصفيائه الذين اراد الله ع... الذين اراد الله عز وجل لهم المتعه التي لا تنقضي في دار القرار اخواني كالح هو وجه الحياه اذا فق ان فقدت منها الرحمه اذا كانت الرحمه فيها سلعه غائبه غير موجوده والانسان ما الانسان اذا جرد هذا الانسان عن الرحمه هل هو الا هيكل او اكوام متراصه من اللحم او العظم هل الانسان في كنهه وحقيقته الا جمله من المعاني لا جمله من الصور في دنيا الناس اليوم رحمه غائبه او تكاد تكون غائبه حين تغيب الرحمه فلا تستغرب على حاكم يكسر عظام شعبه ورعيته لانه يريد ان يستبقي على الكرسي ولتذهب الدنيا بعد ذلك الى الجحيم في دنيا ذهاب الرحمه واضمحلالها لا تستبعد ان ترى عقوقا من ولد تجاه والده ان ترى عضلا من والد تجاه ابنته ان ترى استطاله الناس على اموال بعضهم البعض حين تغيب الرحمه او تكاد لا يصبح في البيت الواحد موده ولا تراحم اردت ان انتقل من هجير هذه الحياه القاسيه الحياه بلا رحمه قاسيه صحراء وبيداء لا ترى فيها الا سرابا او صور السراب حتى اذا جئته لم تجد عنده ماء اردت ان نفر من هجير هذه الصحراء الى رحمه سيد الانبياء صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي اصطفاه الله عز وجل واختاره وخلع عليه من رحمته ما لم يخلعه على احد من العالمين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ايه الرحمه وعنوانها فاذا رحمت فانت ام او اب هذان في الدنيا هما الرحماء 
محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في حالكات الظروف حيث يتخلى كل رحيم عن رحمته في أصعب المواقف حيث تطيش الرحمة أحيانا من قلوب الرحماء ثبت صلى الله عليه وسلم برا رحيما يصب عليه سل الجزور ويلقى من قهر الرجال ما يستعيذ منه الرجال ثم يبقى ساجدا صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى جسده الشريف سل الجزور فتتقاطر نفسه رحمة ليقول اللهم اهد قومي اللهم اهد قومي فإنهم لا يعلمون محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عطروا أفواهكم بالصلاة والتسليم عليه ومتعوا أسماعكم يبقى في مواطن يطيش فيها الرحماء عن الرحمة بعد أن كسرت ثنيته بعد أن شج وجهه بعد أن أدمي جسده الشريف يبقى حافيا طريدا شريدا عن الطائف وملك الجبال يعرض عليه قوة لا طاقة لأهل الطائف بها فيقول له إن الله بعثني إليك أن تأذن لي فأطبق فأطبق عليهم الأخشبين فيأبى صلى الله عليه وسلم تتقاطر نفسه رحمة فيقول لعل الله يخرج من أصلابهم من يوحد الله فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم ولو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لانفضوا من حولك ما أحوجنا أن نستجلي صور الرحمة من حياة المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم استجلاء ينبغي أن ينتقل من مرحلة التنظير والدرس إلى مرحلة الممارسة والصفة والعمل استجلاء ينبغي أن ينتقل من منبر الجمعة إلى حياة العامل والموظف والمرأة والرجل والصغير والكبير النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام يقول لكل نبي دعوة مستجابة فتعجل كل نبي دعوته وإن اختبأت دعوتي شفاعة لأمتي يوم القيامة فهي نائلة إن شاء الله من مات من أمتي لا يشرك بالله شيئا أي رحمة كانت رحمته صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك على صاحب الرحمة المهدى أليس هو القائل لربه جل وعلا ملحا داعيا مخبتا منيبا مكررا أمتي 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 فقال الله عز وجل له إنا سنرضيك في أمتك ولا نسوءك من رحمته صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه يخلع هذه الرحمة لأحق الناس بها الغرباء والضعفاء والمساكين وذوي الحاجة هؤلاء أحوج الناس أن تتنزل عليهم الرحمة كان صلى الله عليه وسلم يبحث عنهم يجوس خلال الديار يتفقد أخبارهم يقول أبغوني ضعفاءكم فإنما ترزقون وتنصرون بضعفائكم ويتأول قول الله تعالى ولا تطرد الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه فكان يجالسهم ويؤاكلهم ويشاربهم يعود مريضهم ويواسي فقيرهم ويحن على مسكينهم وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم في شأنهم كله يتفقدهم هؤلاء عادة لا يفقدون في المجالس في المحافل لا يفقد الضعفاء والفقراء إنما يفقد الشرفاء والأغنياء أصحاب الجاه والأموال أصحاب الألقاب والشهادات هؤلاء الذين يفقدون أما المساكين فلا يحفل بهم إلا من يحمل قلبا برا رحيما تضع الحرب أوزارها فيقول النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام باحثا من رحمته على فقير من فقراء أصحابه على ضعيف من ضعفائهم لم يجمع الله له من الشرف إلا الصحبة فقير ضعيف ذميم الخلقة فيقول صلى الله عليه وسلم هل تفقدون من أحد قالوا نعم فلانا وفلانا وفلانا ثم يقول هل تفقدون من أحد قالوا نعم فلانا وفلانا وفلانا ثم يقول في الثالثة هل تفقدون من أحد قالوا لا قال لكني أفقد جليبيبا فاطلبوه فإذا هو قتيل 
في في سبعة من المشركين قتلهم ثم قتلوه فأتى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فوقف عليه فقال قتلت سبعة فقال قتل سبعة ثم قتلوه هذا مني وأنا من هذا مني وأنا من النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام يعلمنا فنون الرحمة فيقول أبغوني ضعفاءكم إن من رحمته صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قد يقدم هؤلاء الضعفاء والفقراء حتى على خاصة الخاصة تأتيه فاطمة رضي الله عنها أثر عليها الرحى من طول ما حملت ومن طول ما كدت وعملت الزهراء هي بنت من؟ هي زوج من؟ هي أم من؟ من ذا يداني في الفخار أباها؟ تبغي من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خادما فيقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا فاطمة لا أعطيك وأدع أهل الصفة لا أعطيك وأدع أهل الصفة من رحمته صلى الله عليه وسلم وصيته بالخادم والمملوك يقول إخوانكم خولكم جعلهم الله تحت أيديكم فمن جعل الله أخاه تحت يده فليطعمه مما يأكل وليلبسه مما يلبس ولا يكلفه من العمل ما يغلبه فإن كلفه ما يغلبه فليعنه عليه أهل الرحمة هم أخلق الناس وأحراهم بأن تتنزل عليهم الرحمات الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن ارحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء حين أتحدث عن رحمته صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فإنني أبين أن رحمته لم تكن فقط لبني الإنسان للضعيف والفقير والمسكين وذا الحاجة لا لم تكن رحمته حكرا على هذا الصنف تجاوزت رحمته إلى ما هو أبعد من ذلك لقد وصلت إلى البهائم العجماوات لقد وصلت إلى الدواب دخل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حائط رجل من الأنصار فرآه الجمل فلما رآه الجمل حن وبكى دمعت عينه من الذي أخبر الجمال أن هذا نبي الرحمة صلى الله عليه وسلم جاء إليه الجمل يحن وتذرف عينه فنادى النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام من رب هذا الجمل لمن هذا الجمل فجاء فتى من الأنصار فقال لي يا رسول الله قال صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا تتق الله في هذه البهيمة التي ملكك الله إياها فإنه شكى إلي أنك تجيعه وتدئبه جاء رجل إلى النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام قال يا رسول الله إني لأذبح الشاة وأنا أرحمها قال له النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والشاة إن رحمتها رحمك الله والشاة إن رحمتها رحمك الله من رحمة النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام بالدواب والبهم أنه رتب على القسوة بهم شديد العذاب وأليم العقاب أخبرنا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن امرأة دخلت النار في هرة حبستها لا هي أطعمتها ولا هي تركتها تأكل من خشاش الأرض فكان حقيقا أن تدخل النار في المقابل إذا رحمت الدواب والعجماوات فإن الله يغفر ذنبك ولو كنت صاحب كبيرة بغي من بغايا بني إسرائيل أصابها حر العطش وجدت بئرا نزلت فشربت ثم رأت كلبا يلهث يأكل الثرى من شدة العطش قالت في نفسها لقد بلغ العطش من هذا الكلب مثل الذي كان قد بلغ مني فنزلت البئر فملت خفها ماء فسقت الكلب فشكر الله لها غفر الله كل ما أسلفت من الزنا وما أسلفت من الفاحشة بشربة ماء سقتها لكلب ترى كم من الفضل سيكون لأولئك الذين يرحمون عباد الله لا تنزع الرحمة إلا من شقي فارحم عباد الله إن كنت تقي بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والمواعظ والذكر الحكيم أستغفر الله 
أستغفر الله أستغفر الله لي ولكم من كل ذنب فاستغفروه قد أفلح المستغفرون الحمد لله على توفيقه والشكر له على تفضله وامتنانه ولا إله إلا الله تعظيما شأنه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على خير خلقه محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وإخوانه The attribute of mercy in its highest form and in its perfection it only belongs to Allah سبحانه وتعالى all the attributes of Allah are sublime, just like all His names are beautiful. He is the most merciful, and that is why His mercy supersedes His hunger. In order to emphasize on this mercy, and to make us pay attention to His mercy, the first thing that we recite from the revelation that Allah gave us, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the especially merciful. That the first attribute that explains Lafzul Jalala, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. The most merciful, the especially merciful. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes back again in order to emphasize this attribute. And he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. All praises are due to Allah, the Lord of the universe, the most merciful, the especially merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mercy and then divided it into a hundred parts. Of these hundred parts, he ascended one part, one part, to this earth that is the mercy that all the creation of Allah they have in common between them that is the mercy that the parent shows to his children that is the mercy that is exchanged mutually exchanged between the elderly and the young no that is the same mercy that even the animal shows to its young ones when it carefully lifts its hooves not to trample upon its young ones. As for the 99 parts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stored with him, then he has preserved it for his chosen ones that he will show on that day to those ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined for that life of eternity that will know no suffering, that life of blissful enjoyment those are the ones that will earn the 99% or the 99 parts of the mercy that Allah has kept with him. My brothers and sisters, cruel is the life of this world when there is no mercy. And what defines a human being? Who is the human being without mercy? He is nothing more than bones and flesh and blood put together. The human being in his essence and in his reality is no more than a group of meanings and beautiful ideals brought together. This is what defines a human being. The rest is just a shape and a picture that you see. In our world today, Mercy and compassion has become a rare commodity. It is almost non-existent. And that is why my brothers and sisters, in our world today, you will not be surprised when you see a ruler crashing his people, breaking their bones, raining upon, de upon them death and destruction, so long as he remains in power. And the rest of the world can go to hell as far as he is concerned. 
life without mercy. And that is why you see young ones, people disrespecting their parents, not acknowledging the favors of their parents upon them. Without mercy, in the same household, there is no love, there is no compassion. People live under the same roof as though they were sworn enemies. And that is why this life without mercy is like a barren desert. It's like a desert in which you see sarab, a mirage that you think is water. And when you get there, behold, you find nothing. I chose in this khutbah today that we should flee from this barren desert to the mercy of the most merciful of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The symbol of mercy and the sign of mercy. And that is why the poet said, فَإِذَا رَحِمْتَ And when you show your mercy, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَأَنْتَ أُمٌ أَوْ أَبُوْ You are like the mother and the father, both combined. هَذَانِ فِي الدُّنْيَا هُمَ الرُّحَمَاءُ In this world, Nobody, no human being can show you more mercy than your mother and your father. In the most difficult situations, my brothers and sisters, this messenger of Allah, he remains steadfast upon his mercy. Even when merciful people are tested, they have a limit and they lose this mercy. But he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even in the most difficult of circumstances, he remains steadfast upon his mercy. One day as he was praying next to the Kaaba and he went down in prostration and the disbelievers went and they had prepared for this. They brought the intestines of the animals, of the cows and the camels and the sheep and everything they slaughter and everything that is discarded, they gathered this. And they came to where the Prophet ﷺ was praying. And as he was in his sujood, they put everything on top of him. Did he lose his mercy? Did he invoke Allah's curse on them? No. He is overflowing with mercy and compassion. He says, Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamoon. O Allah, guide my people, for they do not know not. For they do not know. On another occasion, he goes to the city of Ta'if in order to invite them to Allah after the people of Mecca refused to accept. So he went to the city of Ta'if and he invited them to Allah and listen to the answer they gave him. Allah could not find anyone to send except you. Then they incited the youth of the city to throw stones at him. And they pelted him with stones until Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was covered in his blood. And as he was leaving the city of Ta'if, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends the angel in whose command is the mountains. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends him to the messenger of Allah. And the angel says, Inna Allah qad ba'athani ilayk That Allah has sent me to you and ta'adhana li fa'utbiqa alayhim al-akhshabayn That you give me permission that I bring the mountains that surrounds the city and crash it with everyone inside it. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam refuses this offer and he says لعل الله يخرج من أصلابهم Maybe Allah will produce from their offsprings people who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ How much we are in need to bring these pictures in our lives. Not something the khatib only reads and recites from the mimbar, and then when everybody disperses, everything goes back to what it was before. The Prophet ﷺ, he says 
that every prophet, he has a dua that has been answered by Allah. Every prophet, he has a dua that has been answered by Allah. Ta'ajjalaha kullu nabi. Every prophet made a haste and others even utilized it, made use of it to curse their people. Like Musa alayhi salam did. رَبَّنَا اطْمِسْ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَاشْدُدْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ فَلَا يُؤْمِنُ حَتَّى يَرَوْا الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ As for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, As for me, اِخْتَبَأْتُ دَعْوَتِي شَفَاعَةً لِأُمَّتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ He says, I have kept my dua so that it can be an intercession for my ummah on the day of resurrection. So who will earn this shafa'ah? فَهِيَ نَائِلَةٌ إِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ مَنْ مَاتَ مِنْ أُمَّتِي لَا يُشْرِكُ بِاللَّهِ Any person in this ummah who dies and has not ascribed partners with Allah will get the intercession of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Is he not the same prophet who would pray all night weeping to Allah supplicating to Allah, repeating his invocation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ummati, Ummati, my Ummah, my Ummah, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately sends Jibreel alayhi salam to go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to give him this special message, Inna sanuraddika fi ummatika wa la nasuuk. O Muhammad, we will please you in your Ummah and we will never disappoint you. From his mercy, especially he would show it to the strangers, to the weak ones, to the downtrodden, to the poor. And that is why he would say to the Sahaba and to us by extension, Abghuni du'afa'akum. He says, look out for the weak and the downtrodden. Hal turzaqoon. That is the only reason why Allah gives us victory and rizq when we look out for the, for the weak ones and the oppressed. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would look out for them, he would sit with them, he would eat with them, he would clothe them and when they were sick, he would visit them in their houses. And normally in this life, these are not the people that you miss. The poor, the weak, the strangers, nobody cares about them. In gatherings, people look out for the noble people, for the honorable amongst them, for the wealthy ones, for those ones that carry names, big names and titles. As for these weak and poor ones, Wallahi, nobody celebrates them except the person who has mercy and compassion in his heart. And that was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And that is why when they went on a battle and when the battle was over and they were seeking out the dead and the injured and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is asking the Sahaba, Atafqiduna ahad? Is anyone missing? And they start mentioning names, Fulan, wa Fulan, wa Fulan. Again, he asks, are you missing anyone? Again, they say names. On the third occasion, he asks them, is there anyone missing? And they say, no. But he knows who's missing. He says, لَكِنِّي أَفْقِدُ أَخِي جُلَيْبِيب. He says, I miss my brother, Julaybib. Who was Julaybib? The honor that Allah gave him was that he was the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Beside that, he was short, he was skinny, he was weak, he was not good looking. And so people tend to overlook such people. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went around seeking him. Amongst the dead, he found him dead. And before he was killed, he had killed seven amongst the disbelievers before they killed him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he lifted him and he said, هَذَا مِنِّي وَأَنَا مِنْهُ This is from me and I am of him. 
when we speak about the mercy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it transcended, it went beyond human beings. It went beyond the weak, the poor, the orphans, the widows, the oppressed. It even went to animals. One day, the messenger of Allah, he enters this farm. And when the camel saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And it was shedding tears. And it came close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's face, it immediately changed. And he said, Man sahibu hadha al-jamal? Man rabbu hadha al-jamal? Who is the owner of this camel? And a man, a young man from the Ansar, he comes and he says, Ana ya Rasulullah, it belongs to me. Afala tattaqillaha fi hadihi al-bahimati allati mallakaka Allahu iyaha. When you fear Allah in this animal that Allah has given you power and authority upon, fa'innahu shaka ilayya. It complained to me. Who taught the camels? that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most merciful amongst the creation of Allah. It complained to me that you overwork it and you starve this animal. And when the Sahabi came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulallah, inni la adbahu shat wa ana arhamuha. Even as I slaughter the sheep, I feel mercy and compassion in my heart. What did the Prophet say to him? وَالشَّاتَ إِنْ رَحِمْتَهَا رَحِمَكَ اللَّهِ This animal that you slaughter for food, if you show it mercy and compassion, Allah will show you mercy and compassion. And that is why in Islam, the person that shows cruelty to animals or mistreats animals is promised the most severe of punishment. A woman locked up a cat, for three days, she would not feed it and she would not set it free to go and eat from the insects of the earth until the cat perished and died. And the Prophet ﷺ said, she will go to hellfire and she deserved. On the contrary, our religion teaches us that when you're merciful and you show mercy even to an animal, Allah forgives even the major sins. Even the worst of sins. He tells us in this hadith, which is in Sahih Muslim, that a woman, now not an ordinary woman, a prostitute, will Iyadu Billah. This woman, this prostitute, she was thirsty. So she came across a well, a shallow well, and she drank from this well. And when she came out, behold, she saw a dog that was licking the wet earth because of the thirst. So she said to herself, this dog must be undergoing exactly what I was undergoing in terms of thirst. So she went inside the well, she took her leather shoe, she filled it with water, and she gave it to the dog to drink. And Allah was grateful to her for this deed, forgave her all her sins. Subhanallah. All the sleeping around with men, all the zina, the fahisha that she committed, Allah forgave her because she gave water to a dog to drink. How about a person who gives it to human beings, especially Muslims who need it in this day and age. And as I stand on this member, I share with you the heartbreaking information that everybody knows. La najhaluha. We know there's a drought that is sweeping parts of this country, extending all the way to the Horn of Africa, all the way to Somalia and Djibouti and parts of Ethiopia, as well as counties in this country, in, G in Garissa, in Wajir, in Mandera, in Kilifi, in Tana River. You have seen those videos that people are sharing on WhatsApp. You have seen Thousands of animals that have perished because of thirst. And you have seen families on the move. This morning a very distressing video was sent, was shared over WhatsApp. We have brothers who still have this mercy and compassion in their hearts. 
They leave their comfort of their houses and families and they go there in order to take help to those people who need it. And he was going around from village to village. He finds the donkey that was carrying all their belongings. The little possession they have on this earth the very donkey that was carrying it for them so that they could go to another place and look for water, the donkey was dead. All the animals, the few animals they had, the goats and everything, they were dead. They had abandoned everything and he could not find them, he could not see their trace, he did not know where they were going. It reminds you of that famine that happened in the 2000s. When a mother was carrying two or three of her children and she would abandon her child on the way because the child could not move and she could not carry three children with her. So if she stays, they all perish. So what does she do? She leaves behind one child and she moves on. And maybe by the time she goes to her destination, she has lost all her children. My brothers, this is the situation. For when the livestock perish, and that is the source of livelihood, the next thing is, people will die. هَؤُلَاءِ مُسْلِمُونَ عِبَادُ اللَّهِ These are Muslims, servants of Allah, just like you and me. And Allah, قَدْ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا نِعْمًا لَا تُحْسَى وَلَا تُعَدَّ Allah has given us bounties, that cannot be enumerated how many they are. When I came just before I gave khutbah, I was very thirsty. And I requested the brother, the mu'adhin, to give me a bottle of water. And he gave me and I drank it. We have brothers and sisters, and children and women, and elderly people. If they have thirst, لا أحد يسقيهم ما. There's no one to give them water to drink. وَأَنَا وَأَنْتْ سَنُسْأَلْ أَمَامَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلِّ Me and you will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did you do about this? What is your responsibility? And when you look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I do not wish to prolong this. When you look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listen to this beautiful description that was given by Imam ibn Rajab rahimahu allahu ta'ala when he was speaking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, وَكَانَ جُودُهُ بِجَمِيعِ أَنْوَاعِ الْجُودِ The generosity of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was all kinds of generosity. مِنْ بَذْلِ الْعِلْمِ وَالْمَالِ Giving out knowledge and wealth. وَبَذْلُ نَفْسِهِ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى فِي إِظْهَارِ دِينِهِ And sacrificing his life so that this deen would become victorious. وَهِدَايَةِ عِبَادِهِ And so that people, can, you and me can become guided. وَإِصَالِ النَّفْعِ إِلَيْهِمْ بِكُلِّ طَرِيقٍ And he would make sure that people would get help in each and every way. مِنْ إِطْعَامِ جَاعِئِهِمْ He would feed those ones who were hungry. وَوَعْضِ جَاهِلِهِمْ And those ones who were ignorant, he would teach them. وَقَضَاءِ حَوَائِجِهِمْ And he would fulfill their needs. وَتَحَمُّ أَثْقَالِهِمْ And he would carry their burdens. وَلَمْ يَزَلْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَى هَذِهِ الْخِصَالِ مُنذُ نَشَعْ He was like this ever since he was, ever since he was growing up as a youth. And that is why when he was given the message and he went to Khadija in a fearful state, Khadija said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, وَاللَّهِ لَا يُخْزِيكَ اللَّهُ أَبَدًا By Allah, Allah will never let you down. Will never disappoint you. Why? Inna kala tasilu rahim. You join the ties of kinship. Wa tuqri al-dayf, and you treat the guest with kindness and generosity. Wa tahmilu al-kall, and you carry the burden of the weak and the needy. Wa taksibu al-maghdum, and you give to those ones who are in need. Hada Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uswatuna. I know of a brother. Today, the leaders of this region, they have completely failed. The government, it allocates billions of funds 
to governors, CDF funds that is given to MPs. Where is all this money? What is to show for this money? Except perhaps, I'm saying perhaps, the lofty high-rise buildings in Kilaleshwa and Halingam and South Sea and other different places. And the rest that maybe has been allocated, it is now being prepared for the campaigns for next year. They don't care about these people on the ground. Whether they die, فَلِيَهْلَ كُلُّهُمْ And that is why the poet, he said, لا تنزع الرحمة إلا من شقي This mercy, it is not taken away except from the heart of the wretched. Who can be more wretched than a leader who advertises on, on social media? In Wajir country, county, people are dying. Livestock have perished. And this leader is advertising on Facebook, there'll be a volleyball tournament. Come for the volleyball tournament. لا تنزع الرحمة إلا من شقي فرحم عباد الله إن كنت تقي If you fear Allah, show mercy to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know of a beautiful brother who lives here in South Sea. He has gone to his home county of Wajir and he's distributing water. Alhamdulillah, in Monali Masjid we raised some funds to buy tankers. Wallah, it is very beautiful, those videos that he has shared. When you see the, em the tankers emptying this water into those polythene bags, and you see human beings collecting this water, you see animals drinking this water, Wallahi, it brings so much happiness to the heart. We collected money from Monali Masjid. We sensitized this in Masjid al rahma in Hallingham. Wallahi, we even spoke to school children and the school children raised over 400,000. Enough to buy more than 20 tankers. This brother told me that a tanker that can carry 10,000 liters of water is, a bit, is between 18 to 20,000 shillings. The reason why it is expensive is because it has to fetch water from a distance of 30 to 60 kilometers sometimes. This brother alone he has distributed, according to the information he shared this morning, he has already distributed more than 91 tankers of water. How many like this do we need in this ummah? Instead of these failed leaders, these bankrupt leaders who are collecting money in order to campaign for next year and they do not care for their people. لا يبالون. Today in Masjid Salam, it is your turn. أنتم أهل مسجد سلام أهل خير وبركة. I know this masjid because I am a member of this masjid and I am privileged and honored to be part of this masjid. And I have never seen a people that are more generous than the people who pray in this masjid. اليوم بعد صلاة الجمعة do not be in a hurry unless you don't care about your Muslim brothers and sisters. Then you can leave. Then Allah will ask you. But for me, I will stand up here and I will raise funds so that we can buy water and distribute to those Muslims who are dying of thirst and they need it. And the pay bill is here. The masjid has allowed generously that its pay bill be used in order to collect the funds. All you have to do is send your contribution to this pay bill and indicate the account as drought. The account is drought. We will do this after Salat al Jum'ah. Ibad Allah. Inna Allah amarakum bi amrin. Bada afihi bi nafsih. Wa thanna bihi malaikatahu al musabihatu bi qudsi. Fakal azza min qailin alim. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al nabi. Ya ayuha aladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallimu azidu anim wa barik ala abdika wa rasulika muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Allahumma a'izza l-islam wa al-muslimin. Allahumma a'izza l-islam wa al-muslimin. Wa adilla al-shirka wa al-mushrikin. Wa dammir al-kafarata wa al-a'da. Allahumma asqi. 
اللهم اسق عبادك الملهوفين اللهم اسق عبادك الضعفاء اللهم اسق الشيوخ الركع والبهائم الرتع اللهم انزل عليهم غيثا من عندك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم فرج هم المهمومين ونفس كرب المكروبين واقض الدين عن المدينين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم وارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد قوموا الى صلاتكم